Throughout the Advent season, indeed throughout all of December, our preaching texts are drawn from the prophet Isaiah. And today we turn to the ninth chapter. We'll read verses 2 through 7. These early chapters of Isaiah are drawn from the reign of King Ahaz, a wicked king who sought to ally himself and Israel with other nations as opposed to God in hopes of finding protection against the Assyrian Empire. Well, that did not work. And thus, Judah became a vassal to the Assyrians with all the accompanying oppression that entailed. Isaiah spoke the word from the Lord through it all. Most of his speeches are warnings and predictions of judgment against Israel for their unfaithfulness to the Lord. And yet woven throughout, we still find visions of promise and hope. So let us hear this word of God. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In Isaiah's day, light was a precious commodity. Of course, there was sunlight, and at the height of day, the heat it brought could be oppressive. Yet you could count on sunlight. Beyond that, light was much more limited. When the sun set, you basically had two options. You could start a fire or light a lamp. Now wood is fairly scarce in Palestine due to the lack of available water. And so fires had to be made with care. Lamps used oil. Then that was expensive. Thus lamps tended to be small, often fitting in the palm of your hand. A lamp that size gave off enough light to perhaps light your way, but certainly not enough to completely illumine a room. So once the sun set, darkness always threatened to overwhelm the light. But that's not the case for us today, is it? The sun continues to shine as it does on this cold morning. And when the sun sets, we turn on the lights. We immediately reach for that switch on the wall. And how many of us ever really fear that the light will not immediately illumine? We have incandescent lights, we have fluorescent lights, we have compact fluorescent lights, we have LED lights, we have halogen lights, we have neon lights, we have floodlights and twinkling lights and colored lights, we have overhead lights and book lights and flashlights. If someone really needs a flashlight today, they often will just pull out their cell phone and turn on the light. 
Yes, when darkness threatens us today, we turn on the light, and lots of them. The result is, is that we are never truly in the dark. Drive along Riverwatch Parkway here in Augusta at night, and it is lit up like an airport runway. <laughs> Fly anywhere over this country at night, and you will see cities and cars and highways and homes easily identified by their light. And then the ever-present screens on our televisions and computers and tablets and phones maintain a constant glow. So perhaps we struggle to hear our text for today in a way that the people of ancient Israel did not. For they truly knew darkness. They truly knew the oppression of a foreign empire. They truly understood the despair that comes from a lack of hope. Listen again to the words that Isaiah speaks to them. Especially listen to the verbs and their tenses. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. At a service just this week, our own Tim Owings reminded me that when we read scripture, we need to pay attention to the verbs. And the verbs in this verse, indeed the whole first six verses, are all in the past tense. Did you catch that? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Yes, for those who first heard these words from Isaiah, their present reality was one of darkness. And yet the prophet speaks with such assurance and confidence that he can use the past tense. The vision of great light was a promised future but it was so certain it could be described as having already occurred. But we are a people who have so much light. We're surrounded by great light. On us, light has shined. And I wonder if that makes it harder for us to hear this text. Yes, in a world so full of illumination, without the backdrop of impending deep darkness, it's easy to miss this great light that still shines. A light, as the Gospel of John expresses it, that the darkness cannot overcome. Yes, I fear that we miss the light that came into the world of darkness and sin in the birth of a child. Isaiah held that hope for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, again in the past tense. We know that this child is born not in a palace, not with great fanfare, not with celebrations for the ages. No, this child is born to parents far from home, with no room for them in the inn, in the town of Bethlehem. And the announcement was given by angels to shepherds, not kings, though those watching their flocks on a hillside outside of town in the darkness of night. They could not wait to go and see this one who was to be the light of the world. So they left their flocks and they went. Later, Magi saw a star in the sky at its rising and for years they followed the light until they found the place where the child was with his mother. They were compelled to go by the light breaking into the darkness. But what about us? If there's already so much light in the world, can we even make out this great light of the one who is the light of the world? Is it even possible to find Jesus when our eyes are so accustomed to the light? We need prophets like Isaiah to point us in the way. And we hear those words in our text for today. On this second Sunday of Advent, we often encounter another prophet, this one named John. 
In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark and Luke, John serves as the one who baptizes Jesus and calls us to repentance. In the Gospel of John, this one crying out in the wilderness is instead primarily a witness who points us to Jesus. As it says in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. Yes, we need prophets like Isaiah and John to point us to the light. For the challenge is greater for us today than for those who walked in darkness and lived in a land of deep darkness. We need to be vigilant. We must be expectant. We must be willing to wait. We must be willing to hear that all of the light that we have in this world perhaps is just a veneer. Something that seeks to hide the ever-present darkness which still lingers and threatens. My friends, I believe that if we want to see Jesus this Advent season, if we want to know the great light, we need to enter into that darkness. Popular business consultant and speaker Steve Mar Marobli says, puts it this way. He says, do you want to keep Christ in Christmas? Then feed the hungry, clothe the naked, forgive the guilty, welcome the unwanted, care for the ill, love your enemies, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Yes, if we pull back the veneer of light flooding our eyes, it will not take long to discover the many who still wait in darkness who understand the brokenness that lurks beneath the illuminated marquee we call life. They know the darkness of grief and loss. They know the brokenness of pain and despair. They know the divisions of race and class. They know the fear of violence and hunger. They know the hopelessness of unemployment and illness. They know a darkness and it is not just them. That darkness dwells in us too. It would be easy to just stay in the midst of all of our artificial light and ignore the reality of the darkness. For that light appears warm and welcoming. And yet I suspect that Christ is found far more often in the midst of the darkness that we fear. The prophets point us to the true light which has come into the world. The light that does not try to overcome the veneer of artificial light. No, the light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. We who have heard the prophet Isaiah. We who've listened to John the witness. We who know the story of the child born in Bethlehem so many years ago. We are the prophets who can now share that light with others. We're going to need to put down our phones. We're going to need to extinguish our lamps and turn off the neon so that we might begin to see. We might begin to see that we might not fear the darkness. But with Christ himself, we might enter in. As author L.R. L. Nost has written, Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break, and all things can be mended, not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally, 
The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. The light of the world, shine upon us once more. Help us to turn off, to disregard all those other lights. Those lights which appear to bring comfort and yet continue to remain cold. Help us enter into the darkness with you. For in that darkness your light shines. And the darkness cannot overcome it. May we be that light that reflects back to you. For those who find themselves in that land of deep darkness today. We pray these things in the name of the child born in Bethlehem to be the light of the world. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.